Hello, I'm Zay Cloud, and today we'll be talking about the history of rap music. So, Gratz, Africa, um, Gritz, or Gritz, is back when uh, they gather in circles and play drums and tell stories, and that's just what we like to consider the, um, the first start of rap, because it wasn't necessarily what you think of today, but it was different stories that fit over a beat. Um, and then we have Kokorak MC, and the party that started it all. He is um, quoted as being the first person to ever rap on a beat in the United States or in a memorable, memorable format. And he said, there's not a man that can't be thrown, not a horse that can't be rode, a bull that can't be stopped. There's not a disco that I, Kokorak, can't rock. So that's known as the first uh, rap line ever. He did it at a party that he was uh, MCing. And then you have the Sugar Hill Gang. Um, they're credited for having the first rap song or album. It was Rapper's Delight. It's just like a eight to 11 minute video, video or song. It depends on which cut you get. And um, it's pretty popular. It's the one that goes, I said a hip hop, the hip get to the hop. Hip hop, don't stop. So um, they're credited as being the first rap group that released a album or record. They're very important for the start of it. Um, they didn't do much afterwards, but it was a hit. People listened to it. They were just kind of having fun over a beat, going all the way through, kind of like they did over in Africa. And the, the grads, they just played drums, and whatever came out kind of came out. Um, next, we'll go to Afro Man, the storyteller. So uh, although making music in the late 90s, his music fits more into the uh, genre of the great storytellers of the 80s and even back in Africa as a lot of what he does is just telling stories or hey this happened like um, not to get too graphic but one of his songs is about him getting high and he's like I was gonna do this but then I got high and I was gonna do something else but then I got high so he's just telling all of these stories um, and then he has the song Colt 45 which is just a fun song it's a little graphic but it's just different stories of adventures that he's either gone on or he's imagined going on. And he also does a bit of scat, which kind of relates to mumble rap. We'll touch in uh, later, actually. And then we have the major rap-based labels. We have Def Jam, which along with being a major music label, it is also a video game. We have Ruthless Records, which is uh, what NWA, which was a big popular group that had some runs in with the FBI in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Um, you have Bad Boy, which was signed to uh, notorious rapper Biggie Smalls, and then Death Row, which was uh, affiliated with rapper Tupac, who is also quoted as being one of the best rappers, if not the best rapper to ever live. And then you have uh, YMCMB, which is Young Money, Cash Money, Billionaires, which is um, owned by Lil Wayne, who is the main push in rap music back in 2018 when this presentation was originally made. Since then, we have uh, other companies branching out, but he's the main one still. So this brings us back to NWA that I was talking about. Fun fact, they were founded on drug money. Um, Easy e was um, sold drugs, same with uh, Dr. Dre, and they started their own company on uh, drug money. They had a lot of political prowess, rapping about things that they went through in their communities back in Compton, their interactions with the police, and um, just how they were treated by society. Which brings us to their band song, um, F the Police, where they were actually told, um, this is in interviews, and their uh, hit movie, Straight Outta Compton even, and I believe even talked to Ellen about it one time, that they were told that they were not allowed to do this song in concert. They had received notice from the FBI stating that, hey, this song's banned, you can't do it. The police in the town told them that if they did it, they'd shut them down. They did it anyways. And um, they were actually met by the police storming this stage. They shot a few blanks to kind of get people to settle down. And when they brought them to the police station, they let them go because technically they didn't do anything but exercise their freedom of speech and ask them for some autographs. 
And then after them, we got into the whole west side versus uh, east side debate. And for the east side, their main uh, relevant people, they have the notorious B.I.G. or Biggie Smalls. You got Mob Deep, DMX, Fat Joe, Nas, Jay-Z, Puff Daddy, AKA P. Diddy, Diddy Combs. And on the west side, you got Tupac, Easy e Dr. Dre, Snoop Doggy Dog, Ice Cube, that was in the dog pound. And um, this was a really big part of rap in the 90s, as you were either on one side or the other. It was, you're with us or against us. Uh, Tupac, and a lot of his songs made death threats towards uh, Biggie. Biggie made threats toward two, towards Tupac. And it is believed to this day that their um, deaths are very closely linked. There are also myths or um, conspiracies that neither one of them died. But to this day, they both maintain a very prominent part of rap culture. Um, after they died, rap kind of changed formats a lot. We moved away from this very hardcore, like we're telling stories, but at the same time, like, don't mess with me, I'll kill you, like this gang affiliated hood way of rap music to a more like loving 2000 R&B feel after the death of the two legends, Biggie Smalls and Tupac. And uh, the early 2000s was dominated by Ja Rule, who had a bunch of uh, songs like What's Love, Mesmerize, and they're just a lot more like dance based, a lot slower rhythm and blues category, but that was the main way of rap. So early 2000s R&B was more of a transition of rap, which shows rap more as a style than a genre. Um, you had Fat Joe, Ashanti, you had Big Pun who was a part of work with Fat Joe, but sadly he passed away early. And then you have Eminem, aka Slim Shady. Um, he was a big influence in rap music as he was a lot more graphic than all of the previous white rappers that you were seeing in the, the rap game. I mean, previous to him, you had like Vanilla Ice, Ice, Ice Baby, or you had the Beastie Boys with Brass Monkey, but he came in with something completely new he, his uh, rap bars focused highly on lyrics, was highly graphic, said whatever he wanted, and it was really tailored around a fast flow, as at one point he did hold the record, he probably still does, for the fastest rap of all time, for Godzilla. And since then, you know, it was in a, another stage for a while of like Eminem, Lil Wayne going at it in that genre after 2000's R&B. And now we're at mumble rappers. Um, so we have little Yachty, 6 9 Mumble rap is a style of rap where um, you can't necessarily understand what they say. Sometimes they are saying real words. Other times they're just kind of mumbling through it. And then they have like one verse. And right now, back in 2018, it was doing really great for some reason. But a rapper by the name of Hobson um, made a song called No Words, poking fun at mumble rappers, stating that they just put auto-tune on and mumble their way through it and you just think it's fresh or dope, huh? So I'm gonna play a tiny portion of that. What the fuck these dudes be saying? This what the fuck they be doing. This brings me to rappers like NF and Post Malone. Um, these two artists are fighting the current trend of mumble rap by writing what they like to call real music. It's actually one of NF's major things he says in all of his music is NF real music. Um, real music is music that has an emotion and meaning. So a lot of Post Malone songs talks about things he's gone through or like life events or just like things that are relatable. While NF raps exclusively about things he's gone through or the ways he's feeling. And they're fighting the trend of mumble rap and party rap that's just about getting high, having fun, doing drugs, or not saying much at all. So these are two artists who are currently fighting the trends with quote unquote real music. And um, I wanted to 
bring it more to a close with the rapper XXX Temptation. Um, the saddest, he's quoted for saying, the saddest thing about betrayal is that it never comes from enemies. It's from those you trust the most. Um, and he really brought rap music style through his career. You got to see him evolve as an artist, even um, just as rap did. He started off real vulgar and graphic, and then he just kind of had like a, a middle ground R&B feel, and then he started writing things that were just real emotional, things he was going through. So he's a great um, person to kind of get a full grasp of rap music from. He was also one of the first great artists to grow up in the media area, era, as he uh, quickly got fame off of SoundCloud. And as he grew, so did his styles, such as rap did. Um, he currently, he passed away the summer of 2018, but I felt like he was still very relevant for uh, this presentation. So he went from rapping about cutting his wrist and having sex with women to um, a music video where he attends his own funeral and it's kind of the death of the old him and on to a, a new him, a less depressed him, a better sense of being. So as you see there, he is walking up to his casket, kind of saying goodbye to the old reckless, abusive, to himself and others version of himself. And eventually he's gonna fight with him and it shows that you're always in a constant battle of who you once were versus who you wanna be. suicide um, and if you ever want to let go he's sad for you and he's sad and lonely but um yeah you really got to see him grow as a person and after that he released a few two more albums and he just talks about growing and overcoming things and it's kind of what rap and music as a thing is it's a way for you to express your emotions and your feelings in ways that you no other way can and um, yeah, grow as a person, music is life. And he also supported the concept that rap was more of a style instead of a genre because he rapped over K-pop beats, rock beats, heavy metal beats, traditional rap beats, whatever he wanted. He just, he took the words and he went for it. Rap is a style, not a genre. And currently rap is in limbo. It's not really going in any um, new direction that's mainstream. It's just a bunch of people kind of doing whatever they want and making music. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs>